All right, we're going to talk about indirect proofs, which are um, also known as proofs by contradiction. In other words, uh, proving something is true by proving that the opposite of it cannot possibly be true. Uh, let me give you an example. Suppose we said that um, girl students girl students can wear hats. And we wanted to try and prove this statement. So if we were going to prove it indirectly or prove it by contradiction, the first thing we would do is take our conclusion, the second half, the can wear hats part, and we would assume the opposite. So we would instead assume, instead of saying girl students can wear hats, we'd say that girl students can't wear hats. And now we need to try and prove this and show that there's a contradiction. So if we assume that girl students can't wear hats and then discover that Amber wears a hat, for instance, Amber wears a hat, then obviously there's a contradiction here. It can't be true that girl students can't wear hats because Amber's wearing a hat. So we've found a contradiction something that, that says that that doesn't work. And since it can't be true that girls can't wear hats, it must then follow that it is true that girls can wear hats because we've proven that the opposite cannot possibly be the case. So there's a sort of a set of rules you want to kind of keep in mind as you're trying to prove things by uh, contradiction or indirectly in algebra and geometry. The first thing you want to do is assume that the opposite of the conclusion, the second half of the statement, is true. Like we did here. We took can wear hats and we found the opposite of it, which was can't wear hats. We the the opposite of the conclusion. And then we proceed as if that assumption is true until we find a contradiction. And in this case, our contradiction was that Amber was wearing a hat after we said that girls couldn't wear hats. Once we've found that contradiction, then we know that the original statement must be true since the opposite can't be true. It was proven to be false that the opposite was true. And then finally, we want to make sure we're not using specific examples. Now, I didn't do a very good job of that with my, my particular uh, layout here because I chose amber in general. But what I did say was that girl students could wear hats originally, so I made, a, made my original statement much, much more general. Usually you don't want to do something like pick out a specific example. You just want to say, you know, there are five students in class wearing hats, five girls in class wearing hats, so obviously girls can wear hats. We don't want something specific because we want to be able to apply our statement to a general situation, be able to say that it always is true. So let's take a look at how this works with our example questions. We're going to apply it to some actual uh, mathematic prob mathematics problems and see how this indirect proof works with actual numbers and letters.